If you frequently find yourself facing challenges in the early stages of the game as a French defense player, this video is a must watch. We will dissect two games that illustrate typical mistakes in playing the French, starting with misunderstanding of its pawn structure and its implications. Now feel free to check the description for the player's names, because we are going to skip that part and jump right into the concrete moves and ideas on the board. The first game starts in a well-known way. e4, e6, d4, d5, e5. Gaining space, and black reacts accordingly by playing the move c5. And that's the primary objective for black in this opening. Initially allowing white to take a lot of space in the center, and then insisting on removing the pawns that constrict black's pieces. White plays logical move c3 to protect their more important d4 pawn. Now, black exchanges on d4, but c5 is effectively traded for the one on c3, freeing up the square for development of white knight. Instead, black should have retained the pawns, hindering white's knight from reaching its optimal square. In the French, typically black is happy to trade on d4 only after white develops their b1 knight to d2 or a3. Now, with the appearance of the bishop on b4, it's time for a pause. Considering that our pawns are predominantly on the light squares, keeping the dark square bishop is crucial, as it serves as our main defender of the dark squares. Placing it on b4, however, does not align with our goal of preserving it in the game. Because soon, white will question it by playing a move like a3. A more effective development involves maneuvering the knight to e7, then to f5, to apply pressure on the key target in the French, the d4 pawn, and finally placing our good bishop on e7. The game continued with both sides developing their pieces, and then black castled. White's minor pieces are much more active compared to black's, with the deceptive activity of the bishop on b4. The only well-placed piece for black is their c6 knight. And in such positions, one needs to be cautious and sense the danger before it's too late. Unfortunately for black, castling was a critical and final mistake. Feel free to pause and reflect as long as you need. Well, I'm going to continue. The winning strategy involves executing the Greek gift. Bishop takes h7. King takes h7 and then knight g5 check. If the king retreats to g8, then queen h5. The only move for black is rook e8. And now queen h7 check, king f8, queen h8 check, knight g8 all forced. Then comes knight h7 check, king e7, and bishop g5. Game over. In case of f6, of course, there is queen takes g7 mate. Instead, black opted for king g6, and white played an excellent move h4, followed by the devastating h5 check. Now, wishing to divert white's focus, black tried sacrificing their knight on d4. Simply accepting the gift or playing something like h5 followed by knight takes f7 would simply do the job, but white opted for a more entertaining move. Queen g4, threatening knight takes e6, followed by queen takes g7 mate. The game concluded with f5, h5 check, then knight takes e6, and finally h takes g6 en passant, checkmate. Going back to the moments of c takes d4 and bishop b4, better choices were available, such as continuing development with knight c6 here. Contrary to the common belief that pinning a knight is always beneficial, you could see here that it didn't go well for black, especially if there were no intentions to trade it for the pinned piece. In the second game, white took a slightly different approach. The move knight c3 is typically played with the intention of waiting to create an opportunity for e5 to come with a tempo on the f6 knight. However, 
we can see the exchange on f6 first. And only then, with a little delay, white advanced their e-pawn, attacking the bishop with gaining space on the king side. Notice how the light square bishop once again successfully lands on d3, keeping an eye on the h7 pawn. Remember, when this occurs, you need to be extra cautious, as pressure against the black king is on the rise. Surprisingly, black is at this point, according to the engine, slightly better. We just need a strategic approach. And when faced with a lack of space, the best course of action is to attempt to regain it, allowing our pieces to achieve greater activity. Let's pause once again and take some extra time to think. And I'm gonna continue with the best move for black, which in this position is c5. White has no good response since their c3 knight prevents the typical c2 c3 move. Therefore, the default pawn is about to be eliminated, leading to a gradual undermining of the rest of the white's center control. The engine suggests queen d2, after which we can immediately take on d4. Now, this move sets the stage for knight c6, targeting both the pawn and the knight. If white chooses to continue trading pieces, black simply gains a favorable central pawn mask, completely taking over the initiative. Instead, black opted for a passive move bishop d7, giving white the opportunity to initiate a kingside attack with a move h4. At this point, playing c5 comes a bit too late, as white can now execute the same sacrifice seen in the previous game. Bishop takes h7, followed by knight g5. Black cannot capture the knight, as after pawn takes g5, it leads to a forced checkmate in a few moves. If king g6, queen h5 is followed by rook h3 and rook f3 mate, and in case of king g8, white plays the same move, queen h5, and then g6 with queen h7 checkmate. Black opted for the move f6. It's another way to undermine two white central pawns in the French defense and regain some space. The difference between c7, c5 and this one is that the f6 means weakening on the king side and is a bit awkward to play. In this case, I think the idea of playing f6 was not to undermine the enemy center, but to prevent their knight from using g5 square. And guess what? It didn't stop white knight from sacrificing itself for the attack. And the situation is rapidly deteriorating for black. According to the engine, white has a sequence leading to a forced checkmate in seven moves. It begins with, uh, once again, bishop takes h7. Then pawn takes g5. And I'm sure you've encountered this position in those online chess puzzles. There is mate in five. And the first move is rook h8. Check. Gaining a tempo for our queen to get to h5, then g6, queen h7, and queen h8 checkmate. Both games clearly show how important it is to fight for the center and overall space on the board. This struggle should take place as early as possible. Now, opting for a passive approach in this opening is not bringing anything good. As we could see in these games, it may even lead to a quick defeat. And if your strategy involves a slow start, the French defense might not be the ideal choice for you.